In this video, we're creating a graveyard. Skulls with glowing eyes and spawning zombies. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. First, I would like to send a big, big thank you to the 16 people who either become patrons or sent a donation via PayPal since the last video. Thank you very much. In this video, we'll be modeling something along the theme of Halloween. Yeah, it's Halloween this uh, uh, weekend. So my thought here was to make a, a small uh, snap-in piece I have here in, on my landscape, uh, kind of spot where I can detach a module and change over season. So in Easter I have Easter theme and now I want to make a Halloween themed church yard. And the church will be built from ground up and then I will add details both purchased handmade and 3D printed. Talking about 3D printing, Anycubic has a Halloween special sales on some of their uh, 3D printers. Both uh, filament printers and resin printers. So if you don't have a 3D printer yet, check out the link to uh, Anycubic uh, sales page for that discount. Enough talk, uh, let's get started on the diorama. The base material in my snap-in modules is 4mm plywood and this piece is about 36 by 17 centimeters. I elevate the rear of the module by 6.4 millimeter in order to hide the joint between this uh, snap-in module and the uh, landscape which is behind it. To simplify the process of filling, I'm cutting out a piece of uh, styrofoam which I glue to the plywood like this. The rest of the filler will be made using plaster or putty later. Whilst this is drying, we're gonna make some details, starting with the generic gravestones. I'm cutting these from styr styrofoam thin pieces. Uh, these are about 2.5 millimeter uh, thick. I think I need about uh, 9 or 12 pieces, so I cut some extra just in case some gets damaged in the process. Once they've been cut out, it's time to paint them. I do that by fixing them onto a double-sided adhesive tape on top of a wooden stick like this. Then I can spray paint them or paint with a paintbrush. This time I'm using my airbrush. Once they got painted, it's easier to see the structure. See here, some of the stones have a natural built-in structure on the sides but not all of them so we're gonna work on that I'm using um, uh, just a standard knife um, for this um, it gives a nice uh, kind of blunt cut into the styrofoam so I'm just adding same style of marks in the side and also on the top of the stones just to give them some surface structure like this for the markings on the gravestones, I use a thin steel wire, which I just simply push into the surface like this. Now with all this, the surface structure in place, we can add a black wash. What you see here is a drop of black acrylic paint in which I spray a mix of water and alcohol. It's nine part water and one part alcohol. And with this uh, wash, I'm covering all of the surfaces of the gravestones. Now leave this to dry, then we can add the white dry brush. This will enhance the surface structure and uh, give the stones a kind of the nice appearance we're looking for. So wipe most of the paint away from the brush on a paper and then you can start dry brushing the stones. And you see here you how the white paint has highlighted the surface structure. Another detail I was thinking to add to this um, graveyard is uh, the skulls. Uh, I will be 3D printing them and add LEDs inside. So I'm saving this uh, print file onto a USB memory. Taking that uh, USB memory and stick it into the port of the printer. I'm using Anycubic uh, Apricot Craftsman's resin for this application. 
shake it a bit and then we can pour it into the jar on the printer. There's really no need to fill the jar completely since we're just printing small objects here. So that will be enough. Now put the hood back and uh, start the printer. This uh, Craftsman's resin requires 80% of UV power. So first thing we'll do is to set the UV power to a value around 80. So 84 is fine. We'll go back, choose the print and then this uh, skull set of three skulls will appear and we'll start the print process. Alright, now since we got the print process going, we can uh, go back to the diorama and continue to shape the ground. To do this, I'm using a putty or plaster. In my area, it's called Hus Fix and it's a kind of concrete uh, based material. So you mix uh, this with water and get putty. Uh, the only thing you need to be aware of if you're using this product or a similar product is that uh, concrete is uh, corrosive. So you need to use gloves uh, when uh, handling this. So I'm gonna smear this out using my hands because I think that's the easiest way to shape the ground. And then I'm using vinyl gloves for that. This is uh, also needed when you're handling the resin from the 3D printer. So it's uh, good to have a pack of these vinyl gloves around. So and I'm using a, a steel plaster to level the surface a bit to get it a bit smooth. Typically the lawns on uh, graveyards church judge is uh, kind of smooth so we're gonna make these uh, paths uh, with gravel so for that I've made uh, two simple tools using a styrofoam one uh, wider which is the main path through the yard and then I have a uh, more narrow the more narrow styrofoam piece which I can make the side path like this once the concrete putty has started to set, I just level it a bit more with my fingers so there's nothing rough edges or so sticking out. All right, now we can leave this to dry for a while and we can work on more of the details. Next up is the stone wall, which will surround this graveyard. And uh, to make this uh, stone wall, I'm using a you know kind of small, simple tool. I've folded together from a 0.5 millimeter thick brass plate. With this tool I'm engraving all of the stones in the walls like this. This can look uh, pretty time consuming but it didn't take more than 20 minutes to make the walls around this uh, graveyard ready. So now next step is of course to paint these. I will be using the same paint I used for the gravestones, meaning um, a natural gray paint. So I'm painting all four sides of these uh, stone walls using that acrylic gray paint. Once you've got them all painted, leave them to dry. And we're going to continue to use this uh, gray paint to paint the paths on the graveyard. Now this uh, gray paint in the bottom here will uh, most likely not be visible but it's anyway good that if it does it's not white shining through. We have additional uh, one more detail to do here and that is the pillars on the entrance of the yard and I make them from styrofoam as well. The glue I'm using is PVA glue or Elmer construction. And I give them also a coat of that natural gray paint. We can now paint the ground surfaces on the graveyard using a raw umber brown like this. Leave that to dry for a few minutes while we're mixing the right color for the gravel on the graveled paths. For this I'm using chinchilla sand which you can find in your zoo store. 
And I'm adding uh, pigment. Here is a gray, light gray pigment to the chinchilla sand. Put it in a closed container, shake for a while, and then you have that uh, correct color of the chinchilla sand. So now we can glue it in place. For this I'm using PVA glue. Spread the glue using a flat white brush and then sprinkle in that um, pigmented uh, chinchilla sand into the wet glue. Now leave that to dry and then we're gonna make a mix, a wash, a black wash which contains from one part of black paint, one part brown, uh, raw umber brown and nine part water. It's not a problem if it floats into the ground area. Continue then to use the black wash also on the stone walls as well as the pillars. Once it all had dried we can start working on the static grass. To fix the static grass I'm using PVA glue once again. Isn't it very good? You can use that PVA glue for almost everything and I'm applying it using a brush. Do not cover the entire surface, leave random spots here and there without glue. I'm using the finest sieve together with a 2.5 millimeter brown green grass. This is in order to be able to control the density or the flow of grass to the surface. As you see here, I don't um, want uh, the grass to look like a pretty lawn, but uh, to give a better match to the Halloween theme. We can now start to work on the details. I'm starting by gluing the pillars at the entrance in place first. After that I'm gluing the stone walls uh, which uh, surrounds the churchyard or graveyard in place. I glue them as well using PVA glue and I fix them with pins until the glue has set. So then it looks like this. Now it starts to look pretty good. But I would like to add some grass or moss on top of the stone wall here. So in order to do that I'm applying some of that uh, PVA glue here. And then I sprinkle in Woodland Scenic fine turf in color burnt grass. All right, now the 3D print has completed. We can start to paint the objects which we have printed. So uh, I put them also on this uh, same uh, stick with a uh, adhesive, double-sided adhesive paint. You see here this uh, gravestone to the left. That's uh, clearly the stone where all of the zombies will uh, spawn no question about that but first before we can uh, move to that point we need to paint these because the magic will not work if they're uh, apricot colored in black it looks much better here are the skulls and they have uh, this uh, hole in the middle so we can feed cables through that hole uh, LEDs with um, copper wires ready assembled is found on eBay for instance. So the concept seems to be working well, looks awesome. Then we can finalize uh, the finish of the tombstones and uh, everything else. So like we did with the gravestones, we're dry brushing both the outside wall of the uh, graveyard with uh, white like this to enhance the contour as well as uh, these uh, magic Halloween uh, objects. So now we're getting into close the point where this can start spawning zombies. Yeah, it looks like this when the white dry brush is on it. And we do the same process with the skulls. Uh, looks kind of cool. This will be awesome. Yeah, I like this. All right. Yeah. The only thing we need to do now is to drill a hole where we want the skull to be. Feed the wires uh, through and uh, fix the skull in place using fast set glue. And uh, yeah, I 
don't know, but I came up with the idea to have some grass growing inside the skull as well. I mean, why not? It's Halloween after all. Yeah. I placed this uh, magic uh, tombstone here. Then I have some objects uh, since uh, a previous uh, Halloween video where I created the uh, wagon and some uh, pumpkins. So I'm adding those to the scene as well, down here in the corner. And of course the zombies. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, Halloween themed <laughs> tutorial. It's a bit out of the standard modeling, uh, but I think it's it kind of sparks the creativity to once in a while do something uh, different from what you're typically modeling. Uh, if you have any questions about materials methods used in the video, please post them in the comment field below this video and I'll try to respond to that as soon as possible. Hey, if this video helps you uh, with your hobby, um, please remember that this channel is totally dependent on the support it's getting from its viewers. So if you want to be one of the good guys, please get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from, you know, like one or two dollars per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialogue found in the video description below. And if you haven't yet become a subscriber, get to that and uh, enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.